96.7 FM, WORX. Good morning, and thank you for tuning in just after 9 a.m. I'm A.J. Brammer, and it is the first Tuesday in the month of January, the first Tuesday in the year 2021. The first Tuesday of the month means, of course, that it is time for Veterans Talk. Now, this is normally a show that we do from our studios up at WRXWXGO on Telegraph Hill, but we're doing a special edition of the program today, uh, doing the show live from the Indiana Veterans Memorial Cemetery. One thing that is still the same is, of course, I am joined by Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs Outreach Coordinator, Joe DeVito. Joe? Well, thanks for ha thanks for having me once again in 2021. We're back. Absolutely. Uh, as we always say, this is just uh, this shows an opportunity to reach out to our area veterans, just talk about different services that are available to them that they may not necessarily be aware are out there for them. So any outreach we can do uh, just to hook people up with the right services uh, goes a long way. It sure does, and I, you know I appreciate the opportunity, and that, that's exactly what we're here for is to just. Uh, get a little bit of information out, spark some interest, and get people pointed in the right direction, and that's what we're here to do. Um, and I appreciate you uh, coming to see me this time. Usually I come see you at the studio, and I thought it might be kind of interesting to have you guys come out here, um, talk about the cemetery a little bit. It's one of our, uh, one of the parts of the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, we have three main, three main parts is uh, the home office up in Indianapolis houses uh, our Military Family Relief Fund Division, the uh, SAA, which um, they go ahead and do all the state, they're the state approving agency. And their job is actually to go out um, and help, help schools qualify to be part of the federal VA um, GI Bill. So when you see GI Bill approved schools, they're the ones who approve them for the state of Indiana. So it could be if any, from Indiana University down to uh, Joe's, uh, Joe's base lesson school. It could be anything as long as they meet the requirements and they help you know find those requirements so that we can have any kind of education available to veterans. So we have them, um, the outreach division. I, I, I work down here. My team is up in Indy. Uh, we've got most everybody there. And then our two other locations is, is down here in Madison at uh, our Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs Cemetery. Um, it's our state veteran cemetery and it's you know, for anybody who has never been here, you know, come on out, take a walk around, uh, and, and kind of soak it in. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful place. Uh, the, the, the crew here, um, Alan and Charlie and Scott and Dave, they, it's unbelievable. If you walk around this place and you see the beauty, the, how manicured it is and, and the care that's given, to, to see that only four four people are doing that, it, it's it's amazing, and it's a testament to their hard work. I mean, it's also a testament to how lovely the facility is. Just the fact that we're kind of a dreary day right now, but it is, and we've talked about this facility quite a bit in the time that you've been coming on this program. But there is a certain dignity to this place that um, you know you really do have to see for yourself. There absolutely is, and you know, I I was given an, a a wonderful opportunity that I'm so thankful for to utilize this facility for an office. So I have my office here. Um, these guys have graciously uh, offered to host me, um, even though this is not even, you know, the, the, these guys run under the operations division, not even the division that I run, but um, I'm down here. They've had the space. It works out great for me to be here. And, you know, the, it, it's great. Out, any days that I'm office working, I'm usually here. Sometimes I'm on the road and doing a lot of things, but to just, you know, have the, the ability and the, it, it's such an honor when I come to work here to make that turn into the gates and drive down um, the, the tree-lined road and the flags are always waving and just to see the facility, it, it grounds you and makes you realize, you know, um, how important it is for us to honor our veterans, how important it is to have a, a, a place like this. And it's it's an honor to be here and work amongst all the people here. And, I, you know, this is a cemetery that services folks from all across the state, it's not just a Madison cemetery. We do have some notable people from Madison that are buried here, but it is, um, you know, we've seen services from across the state come here. We sure do. And, and that's what it is. It's for, it's for Indiana veterans um, and their spouses can come here. Uh, it's it's pretty much no charge at all uh, for any for the veterans who qualify to come and they, they have a like I said the facility is beautiful they have a wonderful chapel here where they can have services as well it's a beautiful setup in there and they've got a, a great great big window that they rise the, the blinds up and you can see the uh, 
American Legion Honor Guard uh, do the rifle volley, and um, it's just such a great facility. And they are still going right now. I know we're cross our fingers. We're hopefully uh, nearing the end of the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic with with the vaccine that's coming out, and, and hopefully we come around. But you know, the the cemetery is open. Anybody can come up, walk through the grounds. Um, they, I know they're still having services here when they have them. The uh, chapel's at half capacity, so about 25 folks in there. Usually it's about 50. Uh, we have There's an annual federal program called Reads Across America where folks can come out to the cemetery in December. Usually it's the second week in December. I think the second Saturday. Don't quote me on that. Um, they can come out to the, one of the cemeteries and lay a wreath at a veteran's uh, grave marker. And when it's all done, I mean, everyone has a Christmas wreath on the marker, and it's a beautiful sight. Um, as with everything else in 2020, uh, things were weird this year with the COVID. And uh, the program, we did have the program here at the cemetery, but we, uh, with the COVID, we couldn't allow folks to actually handle and do all the wreaths. So the crew here, uh, myself and some of the other folks from Indianapolis from the executive team came down. Uh, Dennis Weimer, our director, and Mike Thompson, our operations director, came down and helped the crew. And, and it took us about a day, but we got, we got them all out. Um, and I do want to say a quick thank you, too. We got all the wreaths out. Um, we were short a few. And we did this on the day before, Saturday, was this. We came out on a Friday to get them all ready so folks could come and at least see it on Saturday. And we were a few short. and. A quick phone call to um, one of our local folks here who is one of the greatest veterans advocate we have in the state, which is Morgan and A Funeral Home. And, and uh, I, I think probably it seemed like within hours, Rodney was here with exactly what we needed for wreaths and made sure that happened. So we got them all covered and, and it looks beautiful out there. So if you have a chance today, you want to come down and see that. It's a wonderful testament. Uh, wreaths Cross America, they do great work. So I'm happy that even despite these strange circumstances, uh, that's a tradition that was able to be carried on. And certainly um, a testament to the hard work of the guys that run this facility as well, that things are different because of COVID, but things have not stopped. Absolutely. And and to think about the, you know, the, the amount of work it takes to maintain the facility, and that's all season, you know, even during even during the winter months, there's so much to do. And and I know it's it's been very busy for them too. Uh, I know in December 23, I think they had 23 interments in the month of December. So that's a lot just for one month. Um, and then, like I said, to do the wreaths and maintain all the equipment and do all the other things they do, it's it's an outstanding effort. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, we got wreaths across America also um, Veterans Day and Memorial Day. I think there are services here as well, aren't there? Absolutely. There's programs here usually. Uh, 2020, once again, we had to uh kind of cancel or, or kind of regroup and and not have what's usually done but the, yeah we have ceremonies up here and different programs and dignitaries come and and it's beautiful on a new veterans holiday this is a wonderful place to come i think yeah we've seen a couple different times over the time that i i've been working here working with wrx you know we've had situations where like a veterans a veteran out of world war ii whose body was identified years after the fact with you know modern technology and then, you know, at that point, they may not have family around to claim the body, so the, they make the decision to bury, bury them in this cemetery. And any time you've ever seen anything like that, it's just really cool to see all the people from the community, folks from the cemetery, but also folks from the community that, you know, come together to have a service, you know, for this veteran just to make sure that, you know, they are remembered. Absolutely. And, you know, and you got to... You know, you got to love the folks in Jefferson County who, who embrace this facility. And I think it, it helps foster a little bit of, of respect and honor even above and beyond for the folks locally here. And, and like you said, when there's, when there's uh, any kind of an occasion where, um, you know, we, there's a service here, um, people come out. I know we had a, a large group last year for a homeless veteran. Um, he, he had nobody at all. So we made sure he had a spot here and, and a lot of folks turned out for that service as well. So we want to make sure, you know, any Indiana veteran that we can find. There was a, a case not too long ago where uh, there was a veteran, I th believe he may have been a homeless veteran, passed away, had trouble finding his discharge papers, um, wasn't sure if he was qualified to be here. Uh, he was, you know, waiting somewhere else in the state to, for, to be interned. And, you, as soon as the word gets here, you know, these guys jump into action um, between the folks in Indianapolis um, and Alan here. 
it took him no time at all to do the federal records and everything else to find what they needed, make sure he did qualify and get him a spot and, and have a service and, and give him a place to rest. So, you know, it's that honor that, that we show the veterans here that, that we want to give every day. And you, you can see it in, in the efforts, like I said, that they do. It's, it's amazing. As we say, Joe, this um, show our chance to check in with our area veterans, talk about different services, things like that, that are available. And um, it's important for us to be able to reach out to them, and that is why it's important to have an outreach director that's able to do that. Absolutely, and, and I've got a, I've got a great team uh, working with me as well up in Indianapolis, and hopefully we got one more spot we can fill uh, to finalize the team, and I'm excited to do that in 2021 as well. Um, one of the things I want to update folks on today right now is uh, to let our veterans know about some of the vaccination process with, yeah. the, with the federal VA and VA healthcare. Um, as, as we probably, hopefully everybody knows, um, it's now rolling out uh, across the nation and in Indiana as well. And uh, the VA is following a lot of the CDC protocols as well. So the, you know, the first folks with VA and VA healthcare to receive the vaccine is gonna be veterans who are in long-term care facilities, as well as uh, the, uh, workers who work there, VA healthcare workers who work there. So that's when they're, that's the first phase of uh, vaccinations. Um, like I said, that mirrors pretty much everybody else. That mirrors what we're doing up the Indiana Veterans Home as well, uh, up in West Lafayette. And that's the other uh, satellite facility that's um, under the Indian Department of Veterans Affairs. And uh, Joy Grow and her staff up there have been amazing uh, with what they've done in helping protect all the veterans up there and all the residents. And I, I believe in here next week, maybe next Monday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, partnership with CVS crews coming in and they're gonna start and do vaccinations for everybody, all the residents and staff up at the Indiana Veterans Home. So that's kicking in as well. Um, I do know stage two with VA is gonna be for high risk veterans. And that's gonna be veterans who have certain health conditions, certain age as well. So if, you, if you're not in a facility, but you are in one of those high risk categories, they'll be the very next person to uh, get those uh, vaccinations. I know they'll be doing them at the VA medical centers and all the community-based outpatient clinics as well. Um, and they'll be kind of phasing that in. If you want to make sure uh, you want to know something specific for you or anything about the schedule local to where you're at, if you're a veteran out there listening, make sure you call your, your clinic and your doctor and you can find out specifically any vaccination information for you. So that's kind of how they're doing it. Um, and then once that's done, it'll just be kind of a available to everybody and hopefully we'll keep that rolling out. Certainly and I think that you know that's important to remember that it's going to vary by location to location so making the phone call is definitely your best bet. Absolutely and for the veterans out there too I know um, you know we're all we're all crunched with it with the COVID and how that's worked and we've had some VA uh, some of the clinics have had different hours in different situations but VA healthcare is open and running so if you're a veteran out there and uh, it might, doesn't have anything to do with the virus. If you're sick, ill, injured, hurt, you know, utilize your VA healthcare system. You, you do your due diligence uh, and make sure you know where to go and how things are operating. Uh, you can do that at any time and you should do that. I mean, I would say once, once or twice a week, you can call your clinic, get on the internet, um, have someone help you out to find out exactly what's going on with your clinic, who to call and where to go. Um, I know VA was actually, um, they had a big initiative and we discussed it uh, probably maybe beginning of the year last year, Faith was up and uh, she was, we were so proud to have her announce uh, VA telehealth. There was a, it's a very big push by VA to start doing telehealth and she was setting up a station at the County Veteran Service Office down in Jefferson County, 315 Jefferson Street. Um, she was setting up a spot for veterans who maybe didn't have the technology but wanted to do telehealth and it's funny, it, it, as it, two months later, COVID hits and, and telehealth is a thing worldwide now. And um, I, I know I had to check up with one of my physicians at the Carroll County VA clinic and uh, we did a telehealth one and it was great. Actually, it was better than going. Um, we checked in, we discussed a couple things and uh, you know, it was, it was easy to do. Um, I didn't have to leave the house, it was pretty nice. So uh, VA is doing all they can to make sure veterans are getting their health care. Right, and you know, if there's an emergency, if you need to go to a facility in person, like you said, those services are still available. Nothing is, nothing's gonna, nothing's ever gonna, you're never gonna be turned down from seeing a doctor. 
but it is, um, I think, I'm not going to necessarily say plus side because there's been so much negative involved with COVID-19, but a lot of organizations, I think, were looking at moving in the direction of telehealth. And so this was a, I guess, good excuse to get the ball rolling on a lot of these plans. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think it's it's interesting. I mean, how many how many uh, companies, corporations, and operations are going to wind up being staying with remote work once this goes away? It's it's something that's affected even us. Um, you know, I'm I'm in Madison. My team is up in Indianapolis. But I would say it's only a couple days a week that folks are in and out of the actual office. Um, depending on what you do, if it's a customer service thing, you need to be there. But uh, s- some of the work, a lot of the work that we do, working on our, our websites, all of our social media, doing our newsletters, and different things like that, you know, I, I dare say we're almost more effective in the remote situation. So it's, it's interesting how this is going to change things permanently. Right. And, you know, just as we said that despite everything with COVID, the folks at the cemetery have been continuing to do their hard work um, across the board. As you know, we talk about people that have still stepped up and, you know, persevered through all of this, uh, the folks that are working at the VA clinics, the people that are, you know, at, like, Faith Weir at the um, Veteran Service Office, a lot of people across this state have continued to put in the work every day to make sure that veterans are taken care of. Absolutely. And it's it's been a, it's been wonderful to work with the people I work with, uh, uh, not only with IDVA, but all the county veteran service officers as well. And you know, it, it's an interesting thing because something like this happens and you need to immediately rethink, rework, and redo what you do to make sure you can get things done. And some would say improvise, adapt, and overcome. And it's, it's, it's been great to watch our partners in, in Department of Workforce Development and where I work. And most of the folks who've been in the military before have taken it in a way better stride than most other folks. Uh, they're used to having to kind of work with what you got. So it's been wonderful to see. I know Faith's been... Uh, She's open, she's taking appointments, she's been seeing veterans and doing all she can, working through this, and uh, we wanna make sure that anybody locally knows to go see Faith. Um, 812-265-3600 is the phone number down there, give her a call. And what we want is every single veteran in the state of Indiana to go see your county veteran service officer. It is that simple, just go see them. You may have benefits already and think you're good to go. You may not even know about benefits you get. No matter what your situation, you need to go and probably check up about once a year. At least have a once a year appointment. Things continually change. Um, A great example is a project that I just completed launching today. Um, It's been about a six month project where we had a legislative change in the Indiana Code on veterans and and the other authorized folks obtaining their discharge papers from county recorder's office. So veterans are always encouraged to uh, take your your DD-214 or your discharge paper and put it on at your county recorder's office and have it recorded. Well, once it's there, you know, the veteran can retrieve it and certain other folks with the proper documentation can get that. Well, uh, I came across the legislators that when this process was done, there was no tracking in the end of who got that DD-214 or the discharge and, and where it went. So I was tasked, the IDVA and came to me and my, my team to task with creating a tracking system. So we worked with the County Recorders Association, we worked with the Funeral Directors Association because they were one of the folks who obtained those a lot. And we came up with a system that is literally a few clicks on the computer and we can complete the whole system we store it, no one has to store it, and, and it, it, it really, it was months of work, we got it worked and it's launched, and there, there's a whole new policy rule now on how those are obtained and where that records go. So that's something veterans, we can get the word out as best we can, but you know, these are the things you check in, your county service officer can make sure you know different things that's going on. Uh, Joe, as we work our way towards the end of the program, anything else you want to hit on today? I do want to hit one thing. Um, you know, we're, we're about giving information out here and we're about people trying to let everybody know what's going on and what we're doing. So, you know, you can always check all of our social media sites for the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs. We've got tons of information going in and out uh, from VA, from other state agencies and from private partners and nonprofits. So it's a great place to go and see what's going on and where things are happening um, and then just get general information as well. 
that you can find on our website, which is uh, in.gov forward slash DVA. And it's, it's that simple. Once you go to that homepage, you'll see a link for our social media. Click on that. We can show you all of those. Um, and also on there, you'll see our newsletter. You can find our newsletter and sign up for our newsletter and get it sent to you. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that we've got, I think about 65, 66,000 folks right now on our newsletter email list. So we send that out once a month. This year for 2021, I'm, I'm happy we're, we're launching our new layout for that. So it's going to be, it's going to be even cooler set up um, with a lot of great information in that too. So it, we're setting it up. So if we're, we're telling you about five or eight different things, if you want to know about one of those things, we're going to make it easy for you to find that bit of information that I have to dig for it. So we're making it as simple and, and user friendly as we can, and you can sign up for that at our website as well. And that's a great way to stay informed as well. Right. Yeah. We talk about this, the primary focus of this show here is to, you know, reach out to veterans and, you know, make things easier for them when it comes to information. So a website like that is definitely a, a good part of that goal. Absolutely. We want everything up, up front so you can see it right there when you open it. And uh, we talk about our county veteran service officers all the time and how important it is for veterans to interact, engage, and go see their county veteran service officers. So uh, wherever you are in the state, you have one in your county. And if you need to find them, once again, right to our homepage, uh, in.gov forward slash DVA. Once you get on the website, you'll see right there a big button that says Find Your County Veteran Service Officer or CVSO. Click the button, there'll be a map of Indiana. Click your county, it'll give you every bit of information for your CVSO. Their address, uh, phone numbers, fax numbers, emails, the whole nine yards. Uh, well, definitely, uh, as we wrap up the program, another shout out to the folks here at the Indiana Veterans Memorial Cemetery. It's a wonderful facility, and I know. You're very lucky to have the opportunity to have an office here, and we were lucky to get to do the show here today. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out, and uh, yeah, it's a beautiful facility, and wherever you are, come see it, and uh, you know, encourage any veterans to come see it and see if this is the place for them. All right, Joe, we'll see you next month. All righty, thank you so much.